my dudes, uh, as we as we put 2021 behind us and we step bravely into 2022, we can most certainly see trends happening. We can most certainly see how the landscape has changed and, and what options and, and opportunities are available for artists now that just weren't in existence, you know, three or four or five years ago even. I mean, there are entirely new tracks that you can take as an artist to create a career for yourself that just didn't exist before. And so I wanted to take a look back at how things have shifted in the last year and also, you know, how we can prepare, ask ourselves how we can prepare for 2022 uh, to achieve our creative goals and uh, things that we could put into motion to plan so that we're not caught blindsided and we can take advantage of opportunities that are emerging because I see more opportunities than ever before in the history of mankind for artists to create a sustainable living for themselves, doing what they love, whether that's building your own business around your art, uh, creating a product and selling it and releasing it to a fan base or or uh, getting an employment situation with your dream company, the company that you had always wanted to work for. These things are more within your reach now than ever before in history. So let's strategize a little bit. Let's put things into motion. Let's plot them out and plan for where we want to go in 2022. Uh, starting with your personal portfolio, let's start there. You know, uh, let's take a look at what you've got presented. First and foremost, if you don't have any kind of representation of where you want to go, you know, in some kind of a presentation, then I suggest that's the first thing that you should get on. That is essentially what a portfolio is. It is a showcase of your skill set. If your portfolio doesn't show that you're capable of doing the job that you're dreaming of, then you need to checkbox the things that you need to add to that portfolio to make sure that you are. Uh, get something up on ArtStation or create a Squarespace account and create a gallery on that page. And you can put in basically tailored to the market that you're aiming for, tailor the content in there for exactly who it is that you want to work for or what kind of a product it is that you're making. So if you're making something for customers that you're gonna have to create a social media following for, well, that's a very different presentation than if you want to create something for, for instance, uh, companies to employ on a contract basis. So do your research on what exactly those customers want. They're both customers. And as an artist, you are providing a service, but you have to tailor your content for the customer. And that means that if you're doing very stylized artwork that doesn't fit into any other kind of a genre or there's no other game studio that's making artwork like that, then you need to be selling your content to customers. And that means building out a social media presence. And all of this stems from creating a list. And, and this is the most important thing that you can do. And it's something that I'm doing right now. It's the end of the year. I've got a few days off from some of my heavy, busy client work. And it's time for me to sit down and plan out. What do I I want to release this year? Well, there are a couple of things that I didn't get to finish from last year. I need to finish those, uh, such as the Return of the Ancients illustrated novel. That's a light novel that's coming out. It's a sequel to Secrets of Kung Fulio. I've got the World of Twilight Monk Volume 2 art book. That's right, another 100 page art book that I'm planning to release in 2022. But the type of presentation for these two things are very different. So for instance, the art services that Aquatic Moon provides for Riot Games or Blizzard Entertainment is gonna look very different than say the story synopsis or the presentation of the story of Twilight Monk that's going to be for customers, for consumers, for people who are just interested in fantasy kung fu adventure. So you need to think about who your customer is. Is it a corporation that you're trying to get work with or is it a customer base? Is it people who are interested in a genre? Tailor your presentation towards the right customer. If you're available to do commissions, you need to showcase exactly what they would get and what those price points are. That kind of thing looks very different than doing concept art for a video game and your portfolio will represent that. Most portfolios that I see, the artist looks like they have no idea how their art could be useful to me because they haven't done the research on what exactly that role even entails. So I guess the summary is to research your customer and then present your work as though you can 
fully fulfill exactly what it is that they need or want. For your own part, if your plan is, for instance, to launch a new comic book, then your website or your portfolio should look like you're planning to release a comic book. All of your content should look like comic book material and it should be selling to that customer. So it really helps if you sit down and write down what your customer wants and then make sure that your portfolio or your website presents that in a way that those customers are gonna be excited to buy or excited to hire you. So now is a great time to sit down and make that list of the needs that your customers would have. How can you make a great presentation? How can you make a great experience for those customers to purchase your content, whether it's creating an excellent summary of your story that really entices people of, that are fans of that genre, or whether it's creating a uh, script that outlines exactly what your company or your team does and how it can provide the best service in the industry. What's unique about you? How can you uh, stand apart from your competition? It may also be a really good time to sit down and ask yourself, who should I really reach out to and offer my services to? You know, there may be some people that are already doing something similar to what you want to be doing and that you enjoy doing and that you want to pursue and you can offer your service to them as you are upgrading and updating your pr uh, presentation, your portfolio. People often don't realize what a portfolio is. It, it is a brochure, it is a menu. It is something that when you go into a restaurant and you look at the menu, that's when you decide whether or not you wanna participate in what they offer. So make sure that if you're selling a product, if you're selling a service or goods, that your menu, your portfolio is representative of what you can deliver. Being that it's at the beginning of the year, it might also be a good idea to sit down and look at what kind of new skills you may need to develop in order to improve your menu, your portfolio. So that may mean that you need to sit down and do some courses in 3D modeling. That might be very beneficial for you to increase your value. I didn't, I've done several videos about this, but uh, check out one of my videos about increasing your value as a uh, artist in the game industry. It's called Increase Your Value Every Day. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's about exactly that. It's about learning new skills that can be applicable, that can be valuable uh, for potential employers. Uh, it can also be about learning new skills that will help you to create a more compelling product, whether that's learning how to write a better script for your audience or how to market your content a little bit more effectively or just how to develop some new skills, whether they're 3D skills or texturing skills. There's always new technology emerging. And one of the most beautiful things about being alive in today's era is that you can buy entire animation studios, such as like Moho Studio. When I say studio, I mean, this is a program, <laughs> not a team. But you can buy a program that is, is just as powerful, if not more powerful than anything that they had back in the 90s to create animation, but now you can do that on a home computer. So if your dream is to make animation, you may want to consider picking up some new animation software, learning how to use it, learning some of the new techniques and tools that are being implemented into these softwares that you can now create entire animations with. Right now is a great time to look into this because a lot of these uh, programs are on sale just before the end of the year. As are many tutorials, even my own Gumroad channel. I'm having a massive sale still, just a few days left on that one. You may also want to consider which kind of communities you want to get involved with this year. You know, communities are very important and your social skills are very important. I know a few artists uh, that are just insanely skilled, but not particularly social, a little bit introverted, and that's really kind of cost them a lot of opportunities. You know, you have to go out and get them. You have to go out and get those opportunities and you have to build your social confidence, your ability to communicate with others in a productive way. I've blown many opportunities because I was extremely introverted, shy, and uh, let's just say awkward in my early 20s, which was probably when I needed to be charming the most, but <laughs> I blew it. I blew it with a lot of uh, very important people that would have created incredible opportunities for me in um, Hollywood or in the comic book industry. But at the same time, uh, it is something that you can develop over many, many years. And I've seen very introverted people become great speech givers at big events. You know, if they, they end up taking classes like with uh, Toastmasters and uh, maybe it's time to start that YouTube channel. I got into making YouTube videos because I was tired of 
having a, a difficult time communicating with people. I suppose this video almost sounds like a New Year's resolution. These are the things that you could work on to get closer to your goals. It does certainly, there's something psychological about writing it down, about creating a path, uh, because then you can actually dissect each one. Sometimes it feels like a mountain in front of us. Like, how am I gonna get better at anatomy and environment painting and color theory and composition and develop my social skills and network and develop my marketing ability. How can I do all this? How can I do everything? Well, you know what? If it's in a list, you can break it down into one, each individual little part. This was something that I learned about uh, programming uh, when I was creating my first indie game, Aikida, the Scrap Hunter, which you can play on Steam for free. <laughs> a little plug there. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that I learned from it was that it seems like a mountain when you're looking at the whole project and you're like, oh my God, I got to write chapter two, chapter three, there's collisions, there's all these things. But when you write down each little individual part and then you just focus on one little part at a time, then you're able to uh, put it all together. And then when you look back at the whole thing, it real you realize, oh my gosh, I have come so far but you just have to break it apart into small pieces. And every one of those big dreams that you have can be broken apart into small goals, small dreams, small little things that you can break apart to just dissect each one individually and improve at every single day. And then you'll feel like you're leveling up as a, uh, life is a lot like an RPG in that way. <laughs> you can level up and as you become stronger, you can take on bigger challenges, bigger boss fights. So if you're not quite ready to record a 10 minute video on YouTube with you know tons of video editing, maybe consider just doing 30 second or 60 second videos on Instagram. That's not a bad start. But going back to point number one, only do that if it's in line with where you want to go with your career goals. Because if you're not looking to sell to customers, the broad market, the audience, and you're just looking to sell your services to an employer, then you don't need an Instagram. You don't need to have a, a presence online other than to just have a really kick-ass portfolio that shows you're capable of performing the job that they need to hire you for. Another thing to consider that is in the modern era, it doesn't matter where you live. A lot of studios, uh, depending on the job, of course, but a lot of concept artists just work remotely. And that can actually be really beneficial to you because you could literally work somewhere or live somewhere that's very inexpensive. A uh, small town, you know, maybe, uh, or even move out of the country that you're in uh, in order to keep your cost of living very low. So you don't have to take jobs with clients that might not treat you well. And that is something else to consider is that uh, you can live anywhere in the world. And it's also really good for broadening your horizons, opening your mind to new cultures, new ideas, new ways of living, and also looking at maybe some of the expenses that you're you're blowing a lot of your money on right now and asking yourself, do I need that right now or is that just for show? And uh, maybe there are a few things that you can cut back on so that you don't have to take the crummier jobs or the, the jobs with that client that maybe isn't very nice to you uh, and save your energy for the clients that are going to treat you really well. I mean, how amazing is that? You know, five years ago, if you lived in Egypt or something, <laughs> you were trying to work in the United States, you had a very difficult time because they didn't have an outsourced team. Uh, now, every game studio has an art outsource team. And I, I know because I was part of starting them at both Blizzard and Riot. Almost every major studio is prepared now to work with their artists remotely. So if you choose to live somewhere where it's much more affordable, you can, um, you can find yourself with a lot more opportunities because ultimately those studios need to watch their bottom line. And so they want to work with artists that will work a little bit more affordably. A lot of studios that maybe their main office is in Los Angeles or somewhere where it's very expensive, you know, they, they may not want to pay every artist a six-figure salary just to keep them afloat because uh, that's about how much you have to get paid. It all goes to rent if you live in Los Angeles. But if you're living in, let's say, you know, somewhere in the Inland Empire or somewhere like uh, Las Vegas, well, hey, that dollar is going to go a lot farther. You can work for cheaper and still save more money so that you can invest in your future. Always, that's, I guess, the next thing I want to mention for 2022. Always, always prepare for the future. Set a little money aside into an investment. You know, you get into something like an S&P 500 and you're looking at a nice slow compounded growth of roughly eight to 10% every year. You can almost count on that. It's historical. It's happened that way for about a hundred years. Pretty good reason to believe that it'll continue happening for the next hundred years. This way in 2032, you'll be looking back and going, damn, 
that younger me had something going, man. I'm gonna keep doing this. If someone were to ask me what my number one key to any of, if, if somebody thought I was successful, <laughs> which some people do, if somebody were to ask me what is the number one thing that I would want to, to tell uh, other people to change or to start doing now to ensure their future success, it would be exactly that. Ask yourself the question, what will myself five years from now benefit from me doing today? And ask yourself that about everything, everything from you know, making your bed in the morning uh, to when you go to bed at night. Hey, my past self really took care of me there. I got a nice bed to lay down in. I feel good about going to sleep tonight. It looks cozy. Uh, that's that's on a daily basis. Well, think about if you're investing something that, you know, two months from now, you could, uh, you could be thankful to your past self for setting something up for you from two months ago. Well, that would be fantastic. You're always... If you're always thinking about how you can benefit your future self, then your future self can always be a bit grateful for what your past self did for them. <laughs> and that could be everything from just making sure you're brushing your teeth two or three times a day <laughs> to setting a little money aside into an investment account or developing a new skill or even just plotting something out, planning out where you wanna go. If you're planning to release a book this year, you could set a schedule aside and try to make sure that you stick to that schedule. If you're falling behind, well, you can make up a little extra time on the weekends to get back on track. And then yourself around the deadline will be really glad that your past self planned for some contingencies and planned to have a schedule and planned to have a final product done by a certain date. That could just be between you and yourself, you and your future self. You don't have to make announcements about your schedule, but certainly it does help. And here's the beautiful thing about plans. They can change, you know? Let's say that you planned to finish your book this year in 2021, as this is my own experience, and I wasn't able to do it because I got sidetracked with a really good gig doing some generative art projects. And that's not a horrible thing. It brought in a little extra money, so I was able to give my entire art uh, staff a Christmas bonus, so that was really nice. And it was also good for uh, future planning. So now we're getting involved with some new partners, some new people that we can work with throughout 2022. So yeah, maybe my uh, my book schedule get gets pushed back a couple of months, but hey, I'm still, uh, I still got a plan in place. I still know how much content there needs to be there. And sometimes you can't know how big a project is gonna be until you get halfway through it. And then you can look at the landscape and go, wow, wait a minute, I really need to put more time into this one aspect of it, or oh, it really needs this other scene added to the story. And sometimes you can't know that until you've done your sort of like first draft. And you writers out there will know what I'm talking about. You've got to do your first draft before you can look at the whole story and realize where you need to set things up earlier in the story or plan to uh, add add more, pa uh, anything to fix pacing issues, add more scenes or fix uh, scenes that are maybe a little too dragged out, for example. So more things that have really been shifting is that nowadays you have things like Patreon and you have things like Gumroad and that we are living in the era of the creator economy and I believe that it's booming right now. I think that we're just getting started with it too as people become disenfranchised with how uh, some of these major companies like Disney or Marvel, they're the same company, but <laughs> as people become a little frustrated with how some of their favorite IPs have been handled, they're turning more and more to indies, they're turning more and more to independent voices. Uh, so now is a beautiful, amazing time to be a content creator. It is stressful, it is exhausting. The one thing I want to make sure that you uh, you remember to do is to set time aside for family, set time aside for your health. These are the most important things in your life, especially as you get a little bit older. This ties in with what I was saying before about planning for your future self, you know, uh, taking good care of yourself and taking good care of your relationships is priority number one. So in all of your hustle and bustle to achieve your creative dreams, releasing your books or getting that dream job, don't forget the things that really matter because if those things are gone, if you lose your health or your family, then none of that success is really worth it. It's all fleeting anyway. So keep your priorities straight and you'll never be, uh, you'll never be lost. 
Anyway, I want to thank you for stopping by. Uh, this year has been really crazy, and I'm, I'm really uh, grateful to all of you for continuing to support my channel. I really hope that my tutorials and workshops have helped you. I've been getting a lot of letters this year from people saying that they're finally able to work independently as an artist. They're getting their first jobs because of uh, my workshops or because of the things that I talk about here on my YouTube channel. That really means a lot to me. Honestly, I've worked on some pretty cool stuff, but the, the most rewarding thing is when you really impact people's lives. That does mean a lot to me to hear those things. So I'm grateful to all of you. The artwork that I've got here going in the background of this video is for The World of Twilight Monk Volume 2. This is an art book. It's another 100-page art book. And uh, yeah, you can get Volume 1. It's over on Amazon and the links below, or you could go to aquaticmoon.com. Um, I've also got uh, The Return of the Ancients, which is the sequel to Secrets of Kung Fuyo in the Twilight Monk light novel series. That's going to be coming out here in 2022, early 2022. Uh, don't forget to subscribe because uh, here on my YouTube channel, I answer a lot of inside questions about uh, running your business as an artist or getting work as an artist. So don't forget to drop those questions in the comments below. And I'm here every Wednesday and sometimes more. So until next time, I'll catch you mañana. Ciao, baby. Oh, yeah.